All right, so uh, we're in the middle of week three here, and so I just wanted to take a minute to review where we've been and where we're going. So um, we started off the class looking at chapter seven, and that took uh, weeks uh, one and two, and there we were solving the linear system or matrix equation, y prime equals a y. Uh, or you could write x prime equals ax. I think our book uses x there. Okay, and of course we saw that uh, this uses uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Okay, and then we also take a look at doing some conversions. Uh, you know, going from a system of first order to a second order differential equation and also from an nth order differential equation to a system of first order. Okay, and then we went to chapter 8 from there and chapter 8 was talking about numerical solutions uh, to D's. Of course, we looked at the three different uh, Euler methods, and then we took a look at uh, Rungakutta. And then finally, we're going to um, take a look at some MATLAB um, built-in functions. Um, but for now, we're just uh, kind of saving that. And then we also did an intro to Octave. We just did a few introductory exercises there and got on Octave Online. Okay. Um, by the way, in all of this, we were also doing that group work uh, where we were taking a look at a little modeling problem. And we're going to come back to the modeling problem in Chapter 9, which is where we're going now. So in Chapter 9, we're going to be taking a look first at graphical analysis of, uh, I guess we could say, x prime equals ax. Okay, and this is 9.1. And then we're going to uh, talk about linearization of the more generic differential equation, x prime equals f, that's a vector valued function of tx. And that'll be 9.3. And then from there, uh, we're going to do modeling again. Okay. And so uh, this will take us to the end of this section. Uh, by the way, we'll, we'll also do some numerical simulations of our models. So when we do our models, we want to try to analyze the solutions. And so um, just to give you kind of a foreshadowing, we're going to combine a graphical analysis from a linearization and then also the numerical solutions. Okay, so you can kind of put them all together to see how you would go about analyzing solutions to the general uh, system. Because, you know, normally, given this general system, um, a nice closed form for the solution does not exist, typically. Okay, and so you have to rely on your graphical analysis and numerical simulations. Excuse me, <clears throat> to tell you what you're doing. Just had a little coffee there. Um, okay, so uh, off we go. Uh, today we're going to, I think we'll be able to combine these first two things, graphical analysis and linearization. What we don't get to today, we'll, we'll pick up on Friday. And then Friday, I'm, I'm planning on talking about the modeling uh, in class. Okay, so um, graphical analysis of x prime equals ax. And in this case, by the way, so uh, previously in calc, not in calc, in uh, DE class, we talked about y prime equals f of y, and that's is an autonomous differential equation. Autonomous DE. And when you're uh, exploring an autonomous solutions to an autonomous differential equation, you look for you look at um, 
finding and classifying the equilibrium solutions, right? And so those were uh, things like uh, we had a sink or a source, things were stable or unstable or semi-stable. Okay, so we're going to get some new classifications now. So you'll notice that when we're doing x prime equals ax, so I might just take a note, observation one, the origin x equals zero is always one equilibrium solution. Do you have any others? Well, you would set ax equal to zero, and if there's more than one solution to ax equals zero, that means the null space of A is more than the zero matrix. And so if A is, is not invertible, then typically you would either have, either have a line of equilibrium solutions Or I guess if A is a two by two matrix, uh, it's either a line or the entire plane. Okay, and that's because um, if A is not invertible, then the null space of A is more than just the zero vector, right? And so the in this case, the null space would be one dimensional, and in this case, the null space would be the entire two dimensional space. Okay, so those are all of our options in a two by two matrix. And in chapter nine, we will, this will be only two by two. A is two by two, just to simplify things. We'll talk about the higher dimensional cases as well. Okay, and so what we're gonna be talking about now is trying to uh, classify the equilibrium. as to its stability. And as we go through our different cases, uh, we'll learn about what we mean by stability, okay? So let's talk about, uh, oops, let's talk about our first case. Case one, case one. In case one, uh, I'm going to take, uh, Lambda 1 and Lambda 2 are real and distinct, okay? And then um, the vectors V1 and V2, so let me draw V1 and V2. I'll assume that V1 is this vector and V2 is this vector, just for the sake of argument, okay? And so in this case, right, we know that our solution is X of T equals c1 e to the lambda 1 t v1 plus c2 e to the lambda 2 t v2. Now remember where the t's are. The t's are only in the exponential function. The vectors v here are constant vectors, right? So the only thing changing in time is the exponential function. Okay, so now big question. Uh, what does e to the lambda t times v look like in our x1, x2 plane. Right, so that could be either v1 or v2, or that could be lambda 1 or lambda 2, doesn't really matter. Well, the key idea here is that e to the lambda t times v, and you could put a constant in front, this is a constant multiple of the vector v for each value of t. Whoops. Okay, so therefore this thing, if I just plot this thing by itself, c1 e to the lambda 1 t times v1, this is a, so c1 e to the lambda 1 t times v1 for all t, over all possible t, Right, that is a line 
or I should say is a ray emanating from the origin. Well, I guess the vector could be coming into the origin or away from the origin. Uh, it could be coming towards coming towards so it could be either way the origin. Okay, so let me draw that. If this is my vector v1, and if I assume that c1 is greater than 0 and lambda 1 is less than 0, right then um, what's going to happen if I fix these values and fixed, then this quantity, if I change time, is going to go towards the origin. Right? So c1 e to the, so for example, minus 2t times, uh, let's just say 2, 1. Okay, if I change the t now, you can see that this is moving towards the origin. Okay, and then if I had made it like c1 e to the positive 2t times 2, 1, what would that be? That would be the same line, but it would be going in the opposite direction, right? It would be going away from the origin. And of course, this is where c1 is positive. If c1 were a negative number, in either case, I would have either been coming into the origin along that or moving away. Okay. Good. So whenever we see these vectors like this, uh, we should be thinking of rays either coming towards the origin or away from the origin. Good. So what we'll do in the next uh, video is we'll start from here and we'll look at how to plot solutions of this form. See you then.